Hey guys, it's Jupiter, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be covering uh, game rule, replace item, and kill. As you can see here, we are currently at 585 subscribers, and let me, of course, make everything visible for all of you. Um, so, as always, thank you for that. And yeah, game rule, replace item, and kill. Uh, fairly simple commands, but very, very useful commands, uh, obviously. And so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, cover all of those uh, in this episode. Once again, thank you to Shatter on Patreon for supporting me. Uh, if you want to consider supporting me, click the link in the description down below. Um, and uh, yeah, anyways, I'm going to be covering these two commands and I'm going to stop spamming the screen with it because, as you can imagine, it's even annoying me. Okay. So the first command is game rule. And game rule, and once again, by the way, timestamps will be in the description uh, if I can. Game rule, of course, is a um, is a command that allows you to tweak a lot of the game's kind of options or settings, uh, you know, game-wise, not actually like video saying wise, control wise, or controls wise. Uh, so, anyways, game rule, you notice has a bunch. Of, I'm gonna be kind of going over uh, most of them here, um, just because that way you know what they do. Okay, first off, announce advancements. Uh, this will go ahead and uh, toggle whether or not in chat you see whenever a player gets an advancements. Um, command block output. Uh, is you typically want to have it on false. It's about whether or not a command block would output stuff in chat. You'll notice if I say it's true, uh, that happens. So uh, you don't want to enable command block output most of the time. Uh, disable ancient movement check, and you basically just do game rule, the game rule, and then either true or false. Uh, but it's actually really different for some of them. Disable ancient movement check has to do with, I think, like flying or something. Um, yeah, it, it has to do with checking speed while players are flying. Um, and, you know, it'll help fix lag if you turn it, or if you turn it on, uh, which kind of turns it off. Um, but people could also probably use a cheat. So, um, there's also do daylight cycle, which is whether or not the sun will move. So, for example, my, uh, game is always at daytime, um, which is why I have do daylight cycle set to false. But, uh, most game, or every, uh, world by default have it set to true because, uh, typically you want a day, day night cycle. Uh, do entity drops. Uh, this has to do with kind of, um, well, whether or not entities will drop, I guess. So whether or not monsters will have drops, essentially. Uh, fairly simple. Do fire tick. Uh, this one I will go ahead and demonstrate to you. So you notice here, if I were to go ahead here and use the fill command, um, let's see, negative three, one, negative three, three, negative one, three, and wood. Uh, oops, planks, I meant to say. And I'll cover the full command in another video, but uh, anyways, you'll notice here I made this little wooden platform. So by default, what will happen is if I grab a flint and steel here, uh, this will actually just go ahead and all burn. Now, if you turn fire tick to false, none of this will burn and the wood will stop decaying. So you notice here if I do good game, we'll do fire tick false. Very quickly, the, uh, the fire will just stop having an effect. And uh, yeah, there we go. Anyways, I turn it back on because I don't want this wood here. So yeah, this is called die. Uh, I don't really care too much about it being here. Um, and you'll notice, yeah, it's all dying again. So that's fairly self-explanatory and easy, but there's the fire tick. Um, you then have do limited crafting. Um, and this one is a new one to 1.12, so I don't have the best knowledge of it. But as far as I would be able to guess, and I'll double check this, um, is it would essentially disable the recipe book that you typically have to craft. Um, let me double check here though um, the 1.12 game rules because obviously they're you know they're new ones. But in the meantime, we're gonna continue on here. Um, there is do mob loot. This is kind of basically the same as as do entity drops, but just for all mobs or just for mobs specifically. So do mob loot whether or not mobs drop items. Um, let me double check. Uh, oh, right. So that's mob loot is whether or not mobs would say drop, for example, a sword if they were holding one, and entity drops is if they would say drop a uh, rotten flesh, right? Um, do you want spawning? Uh, fairly simple and self explanatory, just as whether or not mobs would spawn. Um, let's see what else do we have here. We have do tile drops. This is like whether or not what are called tile entities drops. For example, if you break a furnace, whether or not it'll drop, I believe, or it'll have drops, uh, from what I understand. Let me double check here. Uh, yeah, whether or not blocks have drops. Um, there is... Right, so limited crafting um, goes ahead and... Uh, 
yeah, I don't know. It looks like it disables crafting, but of course, since this was just released, there's not a ton of options or information about it. Oh, there we go. I found the, the game rules. So delimited crafting is off by default, and it'll allow players to craft recipes, they, or only to craft recipes that they have unlocked. Uh, okay, let's see. We have, let's see, we were just covering delimited crafting. Um, do tile drops, do weather cycles, whether or not there's weather. Game loop, fun game loop function. So, as if you ever mess around with functions, and I don't actually have any functions installed, but essentially what you could do is if you ins if you create a function, you could have it so that it's constantly on a loop. So if I want, for example, to create a function that would put me into creative mode, I could set that as the game loop function. So I would do, for example, function game loop, or game, game loop function, um, example function, and that function would be on a loop at all times. But I could also go ahead and uh, clear it by setting it to dash. Okay. Um, keep inventory is whether or not uh, when you die you keep all the items in your inventory. Log admin commands has to do with um, whether or not your commands will uh, when run will show up in a server console. Um, max command chain length is actually a new one, and it has to do with um, the number at which the command or yeah, basically if you exceed uh, six five three six or sixty five thousand six five hundred thirty six, um, then any command. Or then that command block chain will no longer count as a command block chain. Um, pretty weird. Max entity cramming. Um, this was oops. This was one that was new to one point twelve or no one point eleven. Um, and what it did was um, by default it's set to I believe twenty. And essentially it makes it so that if you were to have more than twenty entities or you know monsters or whatever in a certain area, um, then it would automatically uh, start doing damage to all of them until you're left with only a couple. Um, next we have um, mob griefing. This is whether or not, say, endermen can grab blocks or um, or creepers can blow up blocks. So setting it to true is the default, so creepers can blow stuff up. But if you set it to false, it means, for example, that creepers can't blow stuff up, which is generally what you might want. And also regeneration is whether uh, you will naturally regenerate health. Um, so by default this is on of course, but you could turn it off if you want to do, say for example, an ultra hardcore map. Uh, random tick speed. Random tick speed is the rate uh oops. Um I said like zero. <laughs> random tick speed is the rate at which things grow and a bunch of game events happen. By default it's set to three, but for example, if I were to set to like nine hundred thousand, then sugarcane would grow instantly. Fairly simple. Um same for other plants, right? Um reduced defog info uh has to do with whether or not you see limited info in F3. So you notice I see a bunch. But if I set reduced bug debugging to true, notice it hides much of that information. Uh, but of course, I want that information. Uh, send command feedback is whether or not you see, for example, game rule has been updated to true in chat. Um, I typically like it off, but for these tutorials, I keep them on. Show death messages is whether or not um, you'll see like specific death messages in chat uh, to prevent spam if you want to turn that off. Spawn radius is the amount of blocks in the, uh, in the radius of spawn that players can go ahead and. Um, uh, and spawn in. I set it to zero so they can only spawn on one specific block. And spectator generate chunks is whether or not spectators um, can well generate chunks. It's fairly simple. And uh, yeah, all right, that's that. Um, there's game rule. And now it's time to move on. Let's see what to replace item. So replace item is actually a very very cool command because it lets you go ahead and uh, well replace items. So if I, for example, uh, you know syntax here. Place item entity or blocks. If I select entity, notice it says selector slot item amount data data tag. Don't worry, I'll go through this. So place item entity. First off, selector. This is who you want it to be applied to. Or say, for example, at e type equals pig, right? But I'm just gonna do which games or wait and yt because I'm on my other account for some reason. Uh, slot dot and then whatever slot you want. So I'm gonna do slot dot um, hotbar dot four. Now, or actually no, I want it to be two. So the weird thing about replace item um, is, or in generally just programming, is that the numbers start at zero and count up um, towards whatever. So uh, when you see a slot that hotbar, you notice it goes from zero to eight. So actually this first slot right here is zero and this last slot is eight. So that means zero, one, two. This is the second slot. So I'm going to be adding basically a third slot in my hotbar. I'm going to replace it with, let's do um, concrete. Uh, yeah, just concrete. Um, and then the amount, we will do uh, three concretes, um, and a data 
tag of one. So there you go, orange concrete, or I could do magenta concrete, or I could do different information. I could do, you know, set the color um, using block data, but we're not going to cover that right now. Anyways, you'll notice there's light blue concrete there. But what's interesting is it automatically replaces whatever, whatever is there. So if I put five there, you'll notice it'll replace it all with three. Um, and so, of course, I could do, for example, slot dot. Um, let's get rid of this. Slot dot armor dot uh, one. No. Slot dot armor dot um, head concrete. And uh, yeah, there you go. That's how you do that. Or I could do glass if I wanted to. Uh, to do that, that's kind of fun. Uh, now you notice I have a, a little glass head. It's a weird little thing. Anyways, um, that's how you place item with an entity. You could also do it with a block. So, for example, if I had a chest here, I could place this chest down. I could do replace item block uh, the chest's coordinates. Uh, again, X Y Z right there, as you could tell. The slot. So, of course, you have a bunch of different options here. I'm going to go ahead and choose slot dot. Um, and in this case, it would be slot dot container because uh, a chest technically container container dot one. Um, Minecraft. Uh, let's do uh, writable underscore book. And yeah, we're just gonna miss the first slot or slot one. Um, is set that again. You have to do slot zero if you want to do really what the first slot is. And I could do for example stone. And there you go. That lets replace item in a nutshell. Fairly simple, and uh, yeah. Last command is the kill command. That's what it does. Uh, essentially what you do is, yeah, slash kill will go ahead and kill yourself. Um, and of course you could kill different specific entities. For example, I could do kill IE type equals pig to just kill all the pigs in the world. But currently there are no pigs in the world. So let's uh, let's spawn in a couple of pigs to, to give an example. And uh, there we go. That's that. And I could kill IE type equals item. Or I can just do quality type equals not player. Um, and actually, I'm the only team in the world right now. But there we go. Yeah, fairly fairly self-explanatory and simple. And that that's that, um, actually. That was a fairly short episode, of course. Let me know what commands you want me to cover. I will cover function. Don't worry about that. And I will probably create a 1.12 changes video at some point. It's just a lot of work, honestly. So... Um, I am, of course, working on other server-related stuff and channel-related stuff. Um, once again, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, go ahead and leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already to see more content like this. I upload every Wednesday. Um, and, of course, um, if, if you need any help, just comment down below with the command you're using and what you're trying to do, and I will go ahead and try and get you as soon as possible. Timestamps for each command are typically in the description. And, uh, yeah, thanks to Shadow on Patreon for supporting me. And once again, thank you for watching. Bye. Um, once again, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, go ahead and leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already to see more content like this. I upload every Wednesday. Um, and of course, um, if, if you need any help, just comment down below with the command you're using and what you're trying to do, and I will go ahead and try and get you as soon as possible. Timestamps for each command are typically in the description, and uh, yeah, thanks to Shadow on Patreon for supporting me, and once again, thank you for watching. Bye!